Paul Slackus, Good News Planet, speaking to Jim Morelli. Hi, Jim. How are you doing? I'm very well, thanks, Paul. Good. Well, obviously, then, if you're very well, then you have doing the right thing. And one of the things we're going to talk about today is uh, medicine cabinets. Is that correct? That's correct. This is the time of year when we really should be looking in those medicine cabinets and making some what for some people will be hard decisions. That is deciding what's going to stay, what's going to go, and what do I restock with. And you know, along the lines of what's going to go, the most obvious thing is check expiration dates. If you've got expired medications, yes, pull them out because there's no guarantee that they are still as potent as they were when you first bought them if they have expired. In addition to that, if you've got old prescription medications that you're not using anymore, those definitely should come out. And finally, if there's anything in there that does not quite look the way it should, even if it's not expired technically, those are candidates for disposal as well. A classic example of that would be a bottle of aspirin. Open it up and smell it. If it smells a lot like vinegar, a lot like vinegar, that means that those tablets have begun to degrade and you really need to be getting rid of those. And of course, everybody wants to know, well, how do I get rid of them? Can I just flush them, put them down the drain or in the trash? And the answer is no, no, and no. What you have to do is contact your local municipality, find out what the rules are for hazardous waste disposal, because that's what these are. And if they can't help you, talk with your pharmacist, because they can probably provide you with an answer. Oh, my God. All right, Jim. I mean, this is, uh, I'll be frank, is fairly uh, brand new information for me to actually, one, Take a moment, you know, and maybe this is a good time like when you change the batteries uh, <laughs> the, uh, once a year to, uh, to check and make sure that you're, you're on top of this. Uh, uh, probably almost, uh, you know, a life-concerning issue, right? Absolutely. You know, especially if you've got things like, uh, you know, old prescription medications in there. I mean, you know, these things should not be hanging around, especially if we're talking about old pain medications. And I know people tend to hang on to these things because they figure, well, if something happens down the line. But keep in mind that prescription medications for acute disorders are just that. They're meant to treat that disorder and that disorder only. So whatever's left over, you really shouldn't be hanging on to. You really should get rid of that. You know, if kids get into it, you could have a disaster on your hands. So you really want to be very, very careful. And that's why when you restock, you want to keep in mind, don't reclutter. Restock, but don't reclutter. Get what you need. Look to the season ahead. Make some decisions on some perhaps um, things that are not medications, really, are drug-free. And I've got a couple of great examples of that here. For pain, we've got something brand new, something from Home Medics. This is the Rapid Relief Pain Relief Pad. This is a very cool device. This you can put on your lower back, your arms, or your legs. And what it does, right, put it right over the area that hurts, and it will send an electrical signal down. And what it does is it blocks the nerve in that area from telling the brain, hey, we've got pain down here. This is the same technology physical therapists use. Um, you know, it's called trans, uh, transcutaneous electrical nerve stimulation, or TENS. So the technology is not new, but the fact it's available over the counter, you know, in a drug-free, latex-free, odor-free version, is new and that's something pretty exciting for those of us who have you know aches and pains that are kind of always there and we know they're related to muscle sprains and things like that it's great to have a non-drug alternative and similarly if you've got nasal congestion everybody should have on hand a saline nasal spray i've got simply saline nasal relief spray here and that is all it is simply saline it's purified water and salt great non-drug alternative if you've got a stuffy nose excellent for kids this will moisturize the nasal passages and it will also rinse out debris in there you know i mean particles that might cause irritation this is a great thing to have on hand as we get into the colder drier months uh-huh okay any other good uh, suggestions for us yeah you know a lot of people this time of year ha have interest in vitamins we, you know we're kind of committing ourselves to being healthier and, and keeping illness away and i think that that's a a great idea um, when you're choosing a vitamin, there's a lot of confusion. Which one should I get? What's a good brand? The truth of the matter is you want to make sure you find one that has been independently verified. You want to make sure it has quality. You want to make sure it has a proper strength, disintegration rate, purity. And that brand that does have all those things is Nature Made. Nature Made is USP verified. It's got the USP seal. And that means that you know what it says on the label is what's in the bottle, and that's real important, and that's why this is the number one pharmacist recommended brand when it comes to the letter vitamins and when it comes to the omega-3 fish oils. Uh-huh. Now, the, the uh, vitamins as well um, have uh, expiration dates, right? So that's, uh, I was actually thinking of that when we were discussing the medicine. Uh, yep. Vitamins as, as well probably lose some potency. What, what's the sort of story in that regard? 
Absolutely, and th that's a very, very good point. You know, a lot of people buy vitamins and they, they make assumptions sometimes that just because it's not prescription, it wouldn't have an expiration date and it's not medicine, but they actually do have uh, expiration dates and it's important to pay attention to them because again, you get that loss of potency over time if they've expired. And that brings up another point about where you store your medications. It really is not a good idea to store them in the bathroom. Uh, most people do it, but a better place would be somewhere that's drier and where the temperature is more even. So like a kitchen pantry or something like that, or a cabinet. Uh, you know, you want to keep it high up enough where the kids can't get into it. If you've got drug diversion issues, which, you know, happens in some household, you want to have lock and key. Um, but the bathroom is really, really not the best place to keep your medications. Yeah, I would agree by far. And uh, um, I think you brought up a, a point about, you know, some of these, uh, you know, young people are taking them <laughs> and using them in the wrong way. So yeah, you unfortunately, be very, very protective in, in that regard. Anything else, Jim, you have that you'd like to share? Yes, when you're going to go to the pharmacy for cold and flu season, for example, you know, which is upon us, you want to make sure that you are getting the most for your money. And I would highly recommend that when you can buy generic products, you shouldn't be afraid to buy generic products. Uh, you know, they're, they're quality products. They'll do the same thing as the name brands, and you can get a lot for your money. And so choose products that are single use. In other words, buy a decongestant if you need a decongestant. Buy a cough syrup that treats the cough. You don't want combination products because you know, you, you want to just treat the symptom you have. Make sure you treat just the symptom that you have. You don't want other medications on board. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a that's a that's a good thought. Uh, you don't you don't necessarily need uh, to cover all the turf here. <laughs> no, you really don't. And actually, if you want to have versatility in what you've got in your medicine cabinet, it's better to have single products because single products like a you know a cough suppressant can be used for everyone in the family pretty much. I mean, adults that is, and older children. Um, whereas if you get a combination product, sometimes you don't have that symptom and you don't have that versatility. Mm -hmm. What do you think about, uh, you know, even with my vitamins, I, when I go to the doctor and I take annual uh, physical uh, checkup and blood test and I ask them to check everything they can with, through the blood, um, he also is a doctor who talks about vitamins and what vitamin uh, uh, you should take. What's your thought there based upon blood tests? Well, I think one of the blood tests that everybody can benefit from, I mean, it's astounding the number of Americans who have low vitamin D. Now, vitamin D is extremely important. And I, I mean, I, the figure is something like 99% of Americans actually have a low vitamin D level and would benefit from taking a vitamin D supplement. I think the key here is to make sure that you're one of that 99% um, and then go ahead and supplement. The concern, I think, with vitamins and uh, any kind of supplementation like that is that we're unnecessarily taking vitamins. Um, and, you know, if you've got a good diet, a good healthy diet, uh, you probably are getting a lot of the vitamins you need. But there are some people out there who definitely could use some supplementation. And then there's different types of, uh, let's use D as an example, D3, D this, D that, right? That's correct. You, you need to know exactly what you need and if you can get it with the help of your doctor and listen doctors these days are very very open to the idea of using vitamins but I think that they're very wise in that they want you to use them properly you know I, I have to tell you the mega dosing of vitamin C is frowned upon and in fact for some people who have kidney disorders for example or stomach issues it's even somewhat dangerous so y you want to get some good solid medical advice I think it's wonderful to supplement your diet with vitamins if you need them and it's great that we have them available and great that we have ones that you know are verified or USP verified but on the other hand I don't think indiscriminate use of vitamins and supplements is a good idea for anybody. Sure, of course. All right, Jim, uh, is there a website or uh, that we can send people to as well? Yeah, sure. Um, to check out that pad, go to rapidreliefpad.com. At armandhammer.com, you can find out more about the benefits of using saline sprays for congestion. And at naturemade.com, read up about that USP verification, which is so very important. Great. All right, Jim, thanks again for, uh, for always sharing some good news with us. Thank you. My pleasure, Paul. Take care. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.